Howdy, babes. It's been a while, but your favorite monkey boy's back to teach you a little something about Blender. Now, this particular lesson was requested by my good friend Wacky Deli to teach them how to use this model that I've made of their character. But considering that this involves an introduction to Blender, explaining aspects of its interface, and teaching some very basic principles of 3D animation, I figured everybody could learn something from this. However, I think it would be weird to give you all Wacky's model, so instead you'll be working with my totally original character, uh, Crazy Cafeteria. Ha. Nailed it. Okay. Original OC, do not steal. So first off, download the latest version of Blender from the official website linked below, if you haven't already. Then download the model via the other link I provided in the description. Open that sucker up and this should be what you're seeing. Welcome to Blender Dudes, now let's get started. Alright, so let's start you off with the interface. Right over here is that main viewport that you'll be operating out of. How you navigate this area is mostly with your scroll wheel. Click that center wheel on any object and you'll begin rotating the screen based on the point that you've selected. Shift and click that scroll wheel and you'll pan around this viewport. Rolling the scroll wheel, <laughs> scroll wheel will zoom you in and out. These three combined are how you're going to navigate this space. Now keep in mind this doesn't impact how the animation looks at the end. That's what this object is for. Left click on this and you will be highlighting your camera. This is what's going to be determining how your animation looks. Now if you push number zero on your keyboard, you'll see what the camera sees. This is where your whole animation is taking place within this window. So, if you click with your middle scroll wheel again, you'll automatically snap out of that camera, which is great for us because it means we're not impacting it while we're doing whatever we're doing. So, first off, let's introduce you to this character here. Up here, on the top right, you have shading options. Wireframe shows everything in terms of polygons, all the pieces that this has been assembled from, basically. Uh, your default is going to be, what? what is it, shaded? Yeah, <laughs> just shaded, no textures. This one here is going to show you textures. Ba-boom. And this one here actually shows the fully rendered model. Now this one is a low poly model that I don't have any shading on besides the ones that I've like actually drawn onto the UV rack which we'll go over later. So that's why this is maintaining its color while everything around it has like a gradient going on. I know that sounds like a lot of information to process but trust me it's it's, it's nothing. <laughs> okay. So if something's funky or something funky is going on with this texture right here, or you're not having the texture, you don't see it, and your character just looks like this, or it's or it's pink, then uh, here's how you change that. Right-click at the space between this viewport and this menu. Anywhere on here. Wherever you see this double arrow, just right-click, vertical split. Come on, vertical split. There we go. Now you should get this little cursor here. Now this line determines where you'll split the screen. And that provides you with a new window to operate out of. And these windows can have different traits and even be looking at different aspects of Blender. Which is great for you because it gives you more panels to operate from. And in this case, we want to go up here to the top left. This object is the editor type and it determines what it is that we're changing. Now, currently we're in the 3D viewport, which looks like a little uh, ball on a grid. Now, what we want to go to is the shader editor. Now, here you'll see a whole lot of nothing. That is until you click the model, and then you'll see these two little doohickeys right here. Use your scroll wheel to zoom in. Click the scroll wheel to pan around the screen. Right here, 
is an image texture which is being run through an output node. Blender is primarily node based in this way. These are nodes and they impact each other and what comes out at the end here. Now right now I have Deli UV but what you're going to be using is something different. So if you don't have a texture or if you just need to see this texture cafeteria boom look at that. Now that's probably who you've been looking at this whole time. Now to make this window go away right click in the same spot between these two windows join areas and it's going to give you this big arrow that determines which area is going to like overlap the other one basically. Boom. Now you're back to square one. You got your main viewport. Now, how things animate in Blender tends to be based on how items are parented or rigged. In this case, I've rigged these in such a way that they don't actually have a standard rig. There's no bones. There's no fancy controls. It's literally just... Look at that. <laughs> it's all connected piece by piece. Now, how you move this around. I would advise clicking on the center. The piece looks like a big old jelly bean, so you'll see it's highlighted here. And push the letter G. You can remember that this means grab. And it lets you grab and move the item around the screen. Now, while you're doing this, you don't have to be holding anything. Just push X to move it along the X axis. Push Y to move it along the Y axis. Push Z along the Z axis. Now, if you double press X, like if you push X twice, you'll move along an axis that's based on the object itself. Same with Z if you push that twice. Same with Y if you push that twice, but it looks like it's indistinguishable from the Y we have currently. And you'll notice this little orange dot here, this very tiny, tiny orange dot. That is where I've placed, uh, if you've ever used something like Adobe Premiere or video editing software, that's basically your anchor point. It's the, the point from which all things are adjusted here. So even though I'm technically grabbing it, you know, pushing here and then pushing G, in reality, it's technically grabbing from that little dot, and everything's moving based on that dot. And I'll elaborate on that further here with scaling. How you scale an object is by pushing the letter S. How simple, right? And it'll scale from the location of that orange dot. The further you drag out, the bigger it gets. When you drag in, it gets smaller. Now, if you want to do this incrementally, and this also applies to moving objects. Push a number. One is the size you're already at. Two will be double the size. Now push escape to not make those changes. If you want to rotate an object, push the R button. And here's where those axes come in handy, because if you don't rotate on an axis, you're just kind of doing it based on what you're looking at. But if you push X, now you're rotating along the X axis. Y, the Y axis. Boop, 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 boop. Z, doing a little spin. And that's how it applies to each. Now, you're going to see how each of these works in tandem with this. You see, I have every part of this character parented to this. And what that means is, let's say if we take this and move it forward the snout. You see this little line here. That tells you that it's parented to that origin point. The origin point that relates to this directly, this jelly bean piece. Control Z to put that back where it was. Now just keep that in mind, that that's how these pieces work. This is the source from which all other things are attached. <laughs> okay, and this will relate directly to our animation. And you'll see how right now. 
Now let's zoom out. Rotate the screen so we get a better view here. Now what we're going to do, technically, is one of the first things you do in any form of animation, and that is the bouncing ball concept. After all, this little character doesn't look like they would walk so well. <laughs> uh, the shape of their body would lend itself very well to bouncing like a little rubber ball, so that's what we're going to do today. How you make animation happen in Blender is a little similar to like recording with a camera. You see this little circle here, this little dot? That's your record button, basically. I know it's called auto keying because it automatically generates keys, but for the purpose of what I'm saying here, it is a record button because it's recording your changes. Push that button and it's highlighted and it will remain highlighted until you push that button again. Now, what you're gonna do to create a key automatically is click that jelly bean body, push G, and then just click. Don't move it anywhere, just click. And look at that. Down here in our timeline, we've made a key. So if we drag this to 60, let's say, these are your frames. The number of frames until we reach the next key will be 60. If you don't already have it selected, select that jelly bean, G, X, drag it forward. Woo! Then we'll click again. Look at that. We just made two keyframes. And now if you drag this, you can watch it. And if you push play, or I believe push the space bar. Play animation here, or space bar, yeah. So it'll play your animation. Perfect. And here you'll see it stops at 120 and starts over. If we want to bring that ending closer, we go to the end here. And we just type in a number. I mean, we know we end at 60, so let's just type in 60. And it'll just loop that portion for us. So, we've got the forward motion, but it doesn't feel quick enough, you know? Slow. Well, as with all animation principles, the less frames there are, the quicker it moves. So let's move this key. You can click and drag it without pushing any buttons. Just click it and drag it closer to the other key. And you'll see it speeds up the motion. It only takes 20 frames to make that change now. But that's a little too fast, so let's stretch it out. Let's drag it to the right. Bring it to 40. And that, I think, might be the speed we want. So now that we've got the speed and the axis of travel that we want, we need to make this bounce somehow, which means we need to move it up on the z-axis, don't we? So, if we drag this, let's say over to 10. Let's say it'll take 10 frames to go up. We'll do G, Z, move it up, whatever distance you want for your bounce or your first jump. Then we'll bring this cursor over five frames. So we'll go to 15. G, Z, and we'll drag it back down. We kind of eyeball this. Let's zoom in to see where the feet land. Doesn't look like Deli's touching yet. I mean, <laughs> cafeteria. So let's drag them down. So they make contact. And we'll zoom out. Now let's see that jump. Woo! <laughs> now let's continue this. So it took 10 frames to go up, 5 frames to go down. We'll keep that consistent. We'll go to 25 now. It's 15 plus 10, 25. GZ. Bring them up. Maybe a little bit lower than last time. Like how a ball loses momentum each time it bounces. Doof. And then we'll bring it down on the fifth frame again. So that's 30 beyond there. And we'll bring it down till it makes contact. Start to see the foot disappear right about there. Look at that. 
So we got one, two. Now there's a whole lot of forward momentum here, you notice. So even as you're landing there, you're sliding forward. It's a little weird. But maybe using principles of squash and stretch will make this look more believable. So let's give that a try. And this is where the scale comes in. So with your jelly bean still selected, bring it over to the next key. Now you can just snap to each key using this button here, jump to keyframe, or the up arrow. So let's snap to that second key at 10. Push S, Z, 1, and then push Enter. This, whether you realize it or not, has created a key for the scale. And why we did that was so that this will be at its full scale when it's in the jumping motion, or at the peak of the arc. So now let's go back to zero. S, Z. Let's shrink this. Boing. Look at that, little pancake. It leaps up, reaches its full height. And as it goes down, maybe we want to stretch a little bit, right? So we'll push S, Z, and we'll increase that. Look at that. And now that we're making impact again, right here, at the 15, S, Z, we'll shrink that down. Maybe even flatter than before. Yeesh. Yeesh. Full height again. And a little bit after, right before that next frame, we'll go to 29. S, Z, and we'll stretch that out again. Once we reach this, maybe we shrink it. But. What goes down must come up, right? So, what has been squashed must stretch back to where it was. We'll bring it, let's say bring this cursor to 33, S, Z, stretch it back up. Just a little bit. So it'll reach full height by the time it reaches that 40. Let's see how this looks. Now something feels a little weird about that, a little jank in fact, huh? With how bouncy and slinky this character has been so far. I think there'd be a little bit of jello wiggle there, you know? When it's sliding here, let's do a little SZ at 35, bring it down slightly. 37, SZ, we'll bring it up slightly. Then we'll get that motion to be closer. So we can zoom in using the scroll wheel and drag by clicking the scroll wheel on this timeline. Let's stay on frame. What did we just do? Stretch or squash? We stretched. Okay. So now we're going to want to squash on 38. SZ, bring it down a little bit. 39, SZ, bring it up a little bit. And then we're at the 40. So what you'll see. It's a little jello wiggle there, huh? But I think that stretch might be a little too much right there. So at 37, I'll bring mine back down a little bit. I went too far. You might be fine, but I went a little too far. Same with right there. Let's bring that down. Now maybe we want to slow that motion. Right here. Now there's ways we can do that with a graph, but I feel like that might be overcomplicating things for folks who are just starting out. So instead, what we're going to do, first let's try stretching this key out. Let's grab this key and drag it over here. See how that looks. There's still a bit of a snap there. 
Maybe we'll stretch the 39. We'll bring that over a little bit. We've got our bouncing jiggling dog. Now, what seems weird about this arc is that it seems constant, like it's, it's just sort of sliding as it makes that impact there. Look when we're making contact with the ground. Boosh. Continues sliding. That's a little strange to me. So if we press G on frame 16 and then push X and bring it back just a little bit. And try to match the location of that between 15 and 16. There we go. It feels like it's slowing down and stopping at that point. It's not just sliding forward as it's making contact. As you can see there, once again, it's like it's sliding forward. Don't know if we want that. Because if you're making another jump, you're not just sliding on your feet, right? So at 31, G, X, bring it back a little bit. Now compare that to 30. Right there. Okay, I've dragged it to the perfect spot. It stops there and continues. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but we want our camera to see this too, don't we? Now, there's an easy way to do this, to see what the camera sees and move it at the same time. We could click it right here and push G and move it, but then we don't know what it's seeing. So, let's push 0 to see what we're looking at. And you see the dog just bounces right out of your view. You don't want that. So, what we're going to do here is create an empty. Click your scroll wheel, get out of that camera. And this is the first object we're actually going to add. Go up here to add, or push shift A. And what you're going to add is an empty which is basically an object that can't be seen by the camera, but it can be seen by you. And let's choose a sphere. And we're going to parent the camera to this sphere so that it follows it. So click your camera. Then shift click your sphere. Control P. Set parent to object. So now you'll notice if you grab your sphere and move it, the camera follows it. And we might not necessarily want to follow the dog itself at that speed, but maybe we do. So let's see. You can see your node here, that little dot. Let's see where that ends for the dog. Let's click here. That dot is right at the bottom of that line that you're seeing there. So, first off, like we did with the dog before, let's grab this empty at frame zero. G, click, and look, you've made a frame. And at 40 is where that movement ended for the dog. So 40, push GX, is where we're moving this empty. And now you'll see the camera is following where the dog is. Now if we push 0, and then we push play, we see the camera's movement. Now, 
Now, you might like this position. It seems fun. But maybe we want to see the whole action, because you can see right here it's getting cut off outside that window. Well, if you grab this, your camera, let's bring it back to zero. Push G, Z twice. You can zoom out, because if you look here from outside this window, when you push G and Z twice, the camera moves on its own Z-axis. And for us, that means that we are zooming in and out whenever we push Z twice on that camera. So, zero, back to where I was. Do we see the full motion now? Not quite. Let's do G, Z twice. Maybe we'll do Z once this time, so it moves on the global Z-axis. And bring it up here. Now let's play that. Now the camera is stationary, which is all fine and dandy, but we want to be a little more dynamic, don't we? Well, you can animate your camera. Same as you animated the model, same as you animated your empty. You can animate your camera. So, as we're going towards this, our 40 here, what we can do is take this empty, which our camera is parented to, push R, and reminding, we are on frame 40 when we're doing this, push R, Z, and we can rotate that empty, and notice that it rotates the camera. So if we click there, our little video here is rotating around that dog as it's doing its little bounce. Now maybe we want to zoom in more into the action as we reach the end of that bouncing motion. Well, let's say here at 33, we'll grab the border. Click the border here. That lets you grab your camera. Push G and do nothing. Just, just click. <laughs> click right where it is. We've basically made a keyframe there, so now if we start zooming in at a later frame, let's say 40, and do G, Z, Z, and move that mouse forward, and we'll do G, X, no, not X, <laughs> G, Z. We'll move that camera down. We're right there. Look at that. Get to scroll this back. <laughs> you get the full action, and then you zoom in on the dog. Boing, boing, zoom. Now maybe we want it to be even more dynamic than that. Let's say on the zero frame, we push G, Z, Z. We go out a little bit, just a little bit. So that way, it feels like we're getting closer into the action as the dog's doing its bounces. And stops here. Boing. I'm thinking we want to do something fun with the character now. Now we've already got all these frames here, let's not touch those. Let's just think from this point onward. In fact, what we can do in order to keep ourselves from messing with any of that, we can take the start here, over here, change that number to 44, since that seems to be where our motion has ended. So now when you push the play button, you'll just see this spot here, None of the, nothing else. However, I think it'd be more interesting if we show the dog doing something as we zoom in. So maybe we take the start to 40. Grab that jelly bean. And let's do a rotation command. We'll push R, click. And when we reach this over here, 
maybe we want the dog facing us. So let's go to 44, RZ, and we'll rotate that dog towards us, where its eyes are making eye contact, or at least they would be if you could see through this. <laughs> and so it rotates right at the end of that bounce as the camera zooms in. And as it's rotating, let's say we want to see those eyes, right? Well, this is where those parents come in. We can take that snout, grab it with G, push G, Y, move it a little bit to the left. And we'll do R, Z, rotate a little bit to the left. G, X, or I guess G, Y. We'll move that snout a little bit further. Not too far. We do want it to cut off that eye a little bit to give it the sense that it's actually, you know, coming right from the face there. Cheat the space a little bit. We'll grab that nose. G. Y. Look at that. We got a nice little three-quarter view of this character now. We'll take these. Let's do the same thing. By clicking the ears first, shift clicking the hair, R, Z, you can rotate it, G, X, move it to the left a little bit. And here is where you encounter a problem. <laughs>
What? Grab that nose, G, Y. And look at that, when you make your rotation, you got a little three-quarter view going on. Now let's say we want this character to do a little motion, right? It's got this little arm, let's do a wave. We'll make a frame here by just grabbing it, clicking it. So it's, we've already got our stopping point there. It's a nice little buffer. Now when we reach 45, We'll do R, X, we'll lift that up, R, Z, Z, no, incorrect, R, X, X, R, Y, Y. It appears my axis is a little off on this one. <laughs> All right, we'll just do R, Z. Or heck, just rotate it freehand. <laughs> All right, we'll do R, Y, in fact and then Rx. And we'll do a little GZ, bring it down here to the waist. Hi. <laughs> Woo. Let's slow that motion down by dragging that keyframe further out. Let's do a little Rx here in between, so it feels like more of a lift midway through. Rz, bring it back a little. And it looks like we're starting to wave, so let's do an Rx. Move forward two frames, Rx. Move forward two frames, Rx. Move forward two frames, Rx. Up and down, up and down. Hello. <laughs> now, at the beginning of this, it's cool that we've got the squash, right? But maybe we want to have it be its full height at that point. Well, Here's the thing. Here's what you can do to mess with all your frames at once. Up here on the top of your tab, let's push Animation. Control A, or rather just push A. And you'll see all the frames that you have in your entire animation. And how it applies to every object. <coughs> now, we're not concerned with most of this. We're actually concerned with just the jelly bean. But in order to get what we want out of the jelly bean, we have to move everything here on this dope sheet, as they call it, a little bit to the right. So we can just grab all that, move it to the right a few frames, let's say about five or so. And we'll drop it, drag that back down. Let's go back to our other window over here at layout. Grab your jelly bean. Scale, S, Z. Go to your full height. Let's see how that looks. There we go. So now it has a little squash before it starts anything else. Hello. <laughs> now if you want to polish this up a little bit more, Think about your principles of animation. These ears wouldn't just snap to that position, would they? They would sort of follow the beam because of anticipation and follow through. We'll move this keyframe a little bit so the ears turn slightly slower than the rest of the body. And for the follow through, we'll go a little bit after those frames, R, Z, drag those ears to the right.
on second thought, maybe we want this dot a little bit further to the left. And then if you want to have the same position as a previous frame, we can just grab this one, control C, control V, and it'll paste it right where your cursor is. Now that doesn't feel supernatural, does it? There we go, a little bit more of a slide there. Now maybe we want the hair to do the same thing. So as it rotates here, bring it further to the left. And as the ears swing, maybe the hair goes a little bit to that side too. And we'll just copy that frame. Bring it back. Boing, boing. <laughs> All right, well, now that we got what we want here, let's uh, do a little bit of rendering to actually get this animation out to the world. All right? So. If we go over here to what looks like a little printer, it says output properties, we can determine how it renders. Now, the resolution you'll find here, and so you can decide what you want for that. Typically, it's 1920, 1080 automatically. Um, frame rate, you can adjust. Don't be one of those weirdos that does 60. Never do that. Don't be evil. Uh, stay at 24, I would assume. Now, your output folder is determined here. Personally, I prefer to keep it in temporary because it forces me to go like grab it and put it somewhere. But if you want to put it somewhere specific, just click that folder button and you can select for yourself on the left side here. Now further down we got your encoder and this is what's important here. The container is what determines what is coming out the other end here. And what you want is MPEG-4 video codec H264 or if you're just making you know a series of pictures you would pick PMG but I would prefer to just make the animation high quality good encoding keyframe interval at about 18 that's fine and then audio we don't have audio that's a whole other animal but uh, that's an option here as well and so with this all assembled. Go up here to render. Render animation. And it's going to go keyframe by keyframe, or rather frame by frame, based on that interval we selected. And it's going to follow what's seen in the camera. And each of these frames as it shows up is basically being rendered and compiled into our final video. And once they're finished, as you can see by the frame count at the top left here, that's when our video will be processed and placed into that folder that we selected. So now that we're at frame 80, our recording is finished. And if you didn't select a new place for that output file to go, and it ended up in the TMP folder. Here's how you get to that. Okay, so you go to your local drive or your C drive, and you'll see a folder that says TMP. That's where all the goods are getting sent. And here you'll see that video. 